Hi there, my name is Mike Mason and I'm the author of Pragmatic Guide to Subversion. This video is going to be an 8 minute tutorial uh, installing Subversion Server on Windows. I'm going to be using two tools for this. The first is Tortoise SVN, uh, which you can Google for, and you should download uh, the version for your Windows, 32 or 64 bit. Uh, download the installer and run that. It's going to ask you to reboot. This is one of those installers where you do need to reboot. So I'm not going to show that as part of this video. Once you've installed Tortoise, you can right click in an Explorer window and you should get a Tortoise context menu. So that tells you it's installed correctly. Next, we're going to be using Visual SVN Server, which you can get from visualsvn.com. Visual SVN is actually also a uh, plugin for Visual Studio. So if you're using Subversion with Visual Studio, I highly recommend the plugin. Visual SVN Server is a free download and um, it's basically a Subversion server for Windows. I already have a copy downloaded, so I'm just going to bring up my downloads and double click on that to start the installer. So I'm going to accept the terms of the license and then pick my options. If you have Subversion Server installed on a different machine, you can install just the management console, but most people will want to install both on a single box. These options are the most important. Uh, the big one here is security. If you'd like to use Windows authentication, you can do so and integrate it with your Active Directory. But for this demo, I'll just be using the Subversion authentication. Now we're going to wait for the Subversion server to install. I'm going to leave this checkbox checked, which is going to start the Visual SVN server manager once I finish the install. Unfortunately, Windows user access control is going to screw up the mouse pointer here for the rest of this video, but hopefully you can ignore that and just pretend I've got a regular pointer. So here's the management console, and I've installed this on a virtual machine, which is why the server URL is a little bit funny. The first thing I'm going to do is create some users so that we can actually log into the new repository. Uh, I'm going to create a user called Mike. And you can also create users using this uh, server browser interface. So if I uh, go up and click on the users, then I can right click in there and say create user, uh, usual kind of way that you would uh, use a Windows Management Console. Next, I'm going to create a new repository. Uh, you can have more than one project in a repository, but I'm just going to create one for my mbench project. And I'm going to ask it to create the trunk branches and tags directories for me. And you can see at the top, um, there's a URL for the repository, which is where the repository has been set up. Uh, I can right click in here and copy that to the clipboard. And I'm going to go ahead and use that in Tortoise SVN to import some code into my project. Going back to Windows Explorer, I can use that URL I copied in the Tortoise repo browser, which will actually uh, show me the the current contents of the mbench repository. And you can see that right at the moment, I've just got the branches, tags, and trunk directories in there. Now let's say I have some source code that I'd like to store in my repository. Uh, I've got a directory on my computer called uh, mbench, which has an IntelliJ project file and some Java code in there. And I want to import that into my repository so that it's stored uh, safely under version control. I'm going to right click in my mbench directory and choose Tortoise SVN import. Uh, and that's going to give me an option of where I want to import to. I'm going to click the little dot 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 button and select the trunk because I always want to import into the trunk. Uh, not to the not to the root of the project and I'm going to enter a log message just to say hey this is an import of my code then I click OK and the import runs and uploads all of my code into the subversion repository next I'm going to rename my uh, local mbench folder to mbench imported so I can tell that that's the version of the code that I actually did an import on uh, I'm not going to delete it because it, it, it's quite important and I want to do a checkout first to make sure that everything actually ended up in Subversion successfully. 
So here I'm going to try check out from the mbench trunk into the C work mbench folder. And if I go to the repo browser here, you can see all the stuff uh, is in there. I'm going to click OK and everything's going to get checked out to a local working copy. The nice thing about Tortoise here is you can see the green ticks indicate that all of these files are under version control and they're up to date. I can right click and view the log and see that, yep, Mike did an import of the mbench code. Uh, interestingly, you can also see that Visual SVN Server uh, created the initial uh, directory structure for me. Now I'm going to demonstrate uh, making a change to a file and checking it back in. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a Java editor on this virtual machine, so I'm just going to edit this uh, readme file in, in Notepad. Uh, you can see that uh, Windows is having difficulty reading, uh, reading a Unix formatted file, so I'm just going to reformat the file um, and uh, maybe add a to-do at the bottom. So I'm going to save the file um, and Tortoise will flag that with a red exclamation point indicating that it's been changed. If I right click and say SVN commit, I can see that, yep, uh, I have changed the file quite a lot and I've added the some other feature thing at, down the bottom. I can enter a log message and commit that change safely back into the repository. And there you can see that the file committed safely back into the repository. And you can also view your repository using a web browser. So if I go into the Visual SVN Management Console, right click my repository and select Browse, up comes my uh, Chrome browser. Uh, gives me a little warning about the uh, security certificate being self-signed. Ask me for a username and password and I can see all of the stuff that's in my uh, repository, including the trunk, and if I look at the readme, there we go, we see the extra change in the bottom of that. So that's it for this uh, instructional video. If you're interested in finding out more about Subversion, please do check out my Pragmatic Guide to Subversion, available from the Pragmatic Bookshelf website. Uh, I've also included a link to the Prag website in the show notes below.